Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we've been doing my April wrap up. Let's get going. I don't think I ever read much books in April. Like we, I had some problems with my stomach, I got food poisoning and then that kind of made me delayed in reading. Which is fine because I just went to sleep when I got it. But yeah, I don't know. So we were just like I thought April just felt short of reading. So oh well. But let's get going. So my first book was Revealed by Lisa Mia Smith. I gave it a two stars. Inspired by Moulin Rouge, set on an island in a magical version of Prohibition era New York. On the island of charm and magic flows like boot like champagne. Champagne and fantasies can be bought for the price of a gemstone. Luke's Revealed is start of a family's fantastical show known as the Splendor is just an illusion. When Prohibition threatening her their livelihood, her family struggles to make a living, watering down champagne and patching holes in the sequin costumes. So when the son of Charmant's wealthiest family makes her an offer, everything everything the Bevelos need to stay in business in exchange for posing as his girl and helping him become mayor, she can't refuse. So yeah, I gave it a two stars. I don't think I ever finished reading that book, or maybe I had. I can't remember, but... Anyways, I really thought the book sounded so interesting. I mean, we got Moulin Rouge, we got the Prohibition era. The bad era is like, if you want to drink alcohol, you have to go like underground, I believe, to be able to drink alcohol at that time. Since back then that was illegal, like it was in the 20s, I believe. So, that's the Prohibition era, but I wanted more of it. I feel like we barely got any Prohibition in the book. So, yeah, it didn't really quite lived up to my expectations. Having a metal, you know, as I said, having a metal and moon merge was great, but everything just felt flat and there wasn't much world building. The characters could have been more fleshed out and the pace was too slow. I did like the magic system. I thought that was really cool. And how each of the families have a specific magic ability. This book also didn't have more of the Bohemian era vibe which I wish it, did. it would have been done so well if it had more vibe to it. I also find it hard how Jameson randomly recognized a dock and a beach. Like he was shown a picture and then he's still like, oh wait a minute, I know that beach. I'm like, okay, but there wasn't like any context behind it. So like, how can he recognize it? But I don't know, I just felt confused about that part. So like, Okay, you do you. So yeah, I just wish there was just more of the Bohemian era and just more of the world building because the islands sound pretty cool and but I just didn't like it. And my next book was The Poison Season by Mama Rutherford. I gave it a 3.5 stars. Lilo has spent her entire life on Endla, coexisting with the bloodthirsty forest and respecting poisonous lake that protects her island from outsiders who seek to destroy it. But as much as Lilo cares for her community, she struggles to accept that her younger brother will be exiled by his next birthday unless he gains the magic of enchanted song so vital to Edward. So who doesn't love a bloodthirsty forest? I sure do. <laughs> so that forest artist is kind of cool, but I just wish she put more thought to the forest just because I'm just so heavily played into the book. But we barely got a glimpse of it, like maybe about almost halfway of the book, maybe just a little bit more than halfway, so that kind of sucked. But yeah, it was an okay book, 3.5 stars. Um, I think I would have loved to see more of the expansions of the Islanders Magic, just because it didn't really feel like it hadn't been touched on that weight. I think the story was fine, but the moment was okay. I think it was just instant love, like right on the spot. I'm like, they don't, like, they just met and then they just suddenly felt love. Like, I don't see any connection or what they have in common. I don't see any chemistry as well, so there's that. But yeah, the book, I think the book was also a little bit flat as well. Uh, most of the stories seemed to be repetitive, but I did like how there was a lot of magical imagery and the forest was cool. But I just wanted more of it. So basically, I just wanted more of everything and how things should have been more fleshed out. I think we should have also kind of, you know, have a more glance of the outsiders as well because not only is Lilo, like, I feel like Lilo is also an outsider technically as well because 
we have islanders, which is what Lilo is, and then we have the outsiders. So technically, if the outsiders are outsiders to Lilo, then Lilo are, is an outsider to the outsiders. Does that make sense? <laughs> so yeah, they're both outsiders in their own way. Long story short. But yeah, I think it was okay. It just felt a little bit repetitive, so it was just okay. My next book is Threads and Buy by Kika Hansa Polu. I gave it a 3.5 stars. So this is where in the world where the children of the gods inherit the powers and the descendant of the Greek fates might solve a mysterious and impossible murders to save her sisters, her soulmate, and her city. So it was a pretty cool concept. I did enjoy the concept, but and since it contained a lot of Greek mythology, we got the fates, we got the muses. So the muses was really a nice touch. I like to read books about muses as well. So yeah, I really think the magic system was also really cool and the weird and the world as well. And I liked how we didn't have info dumping, it just gradually came onto us, which I really liked and really refreshing. Because all the other books I have is just like info dump, info dump, info dump. Just stop doing that, please. So yeah, uh, so I think it was such a, like, a nice change of pace for once. <laughs> However, I think the writing style was okay and the characters were also okay. They also gonna have more in depth instead of the cheesiness fate binds us. Because that was what pretty much of the book was. Her soulmate was, but we have to be in love, we are fated, and that, you know, destiny and all that stuff. So that was kind of cringy. <laughs> but the ending. I don't know how to feel about the ending. I think it kind of bothered me in a way. Like, I don't know, it just felt weird. And like, I, and I did feel most of, com I did feel most of the time confused of the book as well. And the painting seemed a little bit off, so... I don't know, like, this whole book is just a little bit weird, but... I, I did enjoy the concept, so that was a really cool one, so... I don't know, I'm just the pacing felt, it really did feel off, it really did. So I'm just gonna look all over the place. But um, yeah. So I totally forgot to make notes for Midnight Strikes, cause I done read it and that goes to tell you how I feel about the book. <laughs> but the Midnight Strikes is by Zerba Shalaz, and this is a time loop twist where a provincial girl must work with the Logish Prince to stop an attack on the royal family and escape a nightmarish curse that forces them to arrive the same night again and again. From I, what I remember, I'm just going to make this really brief. It was just too repetitive, and honestly, I just didn't like the book because I never did finish it. I just didn't like it, everything was just too repetitive, it was too slow, nothing seemed to be happening, and they just felt stuck. Like, and yeah, they felt stuck because of that time loop, but like, in general, they just felt stuck as well. Like, they were literally not going anywhere whatsoever. They kept asking the same questions, like, Hey, there's an attack. What should we do? How to stop it? It was just so annoying. I didn't really like the main girl, Anais. I, I find her annoying. The prince was okay, but... I don't know. I just felt really annoyed by the book because it kept repeating all over again. And yeah, like, and all honestly, there should be no re it was like about that thing, it should have be no reason to be that long, in all honesty. So, yeah, so that's my short, brief uh, review of the book. I did mention it in my reading vlog as well, the Owl Crate one. So, if you want more, you should go and watch that video. And my final book was The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. I gave it three stars. And unforgettable about how a chance encounter with the list of library books helps forge an unlikely friendship between two very different people in a London suburb. This could have been so much better, but I did give it 3.5 stars. Um, I think I really did like how the author explored the books, like the theme of the books and how it can, it can help people in different ways. So if you haven't saw it reading, I suggest you do. Borrow books from the library to get you started. You don't have to buy books. You can just go to your library and then, you know, just read from there if you like to. But reading books really does help people. So, 
Yeah, but um, I thought the story dragged on a little bit too much. I think like I had a few chapters left of the book and I was like, okay, just give me the ending. I was just done. Like it just kept dragging on. So for being a small book, it was about that thick. <laughs> it was just, yeah, it was just dragging on. And then the main character was okay, I guess, but Alicia was way too rude to Mukesh. Who was like an elderly grandpa, I believe, or the dad, something like that. No, he was the grandpa, I think. Something like that. But anyways. But, um, yes, I think he was the grandpa. But, uh, I had to check. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I thought Alicia was too rude to Mukesh. Like, he was just trying to uh, find, to see if he could find like a book that he really needed, but he doesn't know what, and I don't know, Lisa just rubbed me in the wrong way, it's like, yeah, you can do that yourself, so. I'm sorry, but as a librarian, you're supposed to help people. But yeah, she could just point out like, some kind of suggestions as to what he might be looking for, but I don't know, she just seemed really rude. But um, she was still okay in the end, but she just wasn't my favorite character anyway, so. Yeah, but like, the story was also a bit too slow, and I thought there were too many characters. And in all you know, honesty, like based on the premise of the book, I, I normally thought we were just gonna follow Priya and Mukesh. Like it also said Alicia, but like, I don't know, like it just seemed to mention Priya quite a lot, but we never got like Priya's point of view on anything, so. I don't know, I just wish we just had three characters only. Like Alicia, Priya, and Mokish, and that's it. Like, I don't know, the rest are just kind of not necessary. But, um, yeah, sometimes, and yeah, sometimes the stories would just seem repetitive, and like there was just too many unnecessary details. So, yeah, those are all the books I've read in April, and not much books I read, but I'm happy with what I did, got to read. So, yeah, let me know what you have read in April, and please like, comment, and subscribe so you may notify every time I post. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!